In this video, I'll talk about security testing. Security testing might be required by law or for regulatory compliance. In some cases, we might need to go through third-party businesses to make sure that we have proper security testing in place to secure contracts. Then, of course, we might have to pass audits or achieve some kind of accreditation, such as PCI DSS. Now, the PCI DSS standard applies to organizations that work with cardholder data, such as credit and debit cards, to make sure that that data is protected properly. It's important to understand that the very tools used to test the strength of a network or an application could also be used by malicious users to compromise a system. Fuzzing means that we are feeding abnormal data to an application and we want to observe its results. So for instance, we might pass a number to a string variable. We might read beyond required memory to store a value as was the problem related to the heart bleed bug, or we might make sure that applications don't crash through denial of service attacks. Many tools can be used to execute multiple fuzz tests against a target. So it could be manual, but often it's done in an automated fashion using a tool designed specifically for fuzz testing. Now, fuzz testing must be done from the perspective of a malicious user or a security tester just testing an application. A web application vulnerability scan is another way to test the security of an application. Now, again, this can be manual or automated. There are tools such as Nexpose, Nikto, or Qualsys related tools that will do this type of web app vulnerability scan for us that will check for things like standard misconfigurations or the allowing of directory traversals through the web app file system. Vulnerability scanning toolkits such as Vega can check for the possibility of SQL injection attacks due to improper field validation on web forms and also things like remote command execution. A static code analysis is another part of security testing for an app, which is often called white box testing. This will apply to both compiled as well as non-compiled code. It tests applications inputs as well as the outputs, depending on what was fed into the app. It's used to detect flaws, including things like backdoors. Backdoors allow a malicious user into the application with escalated privileges without the system owner's knowledge. A regression analysis can also be conducted. It's also considered to be a predictive analysis where we look at the varying relationships between different application components. Sometimes when you do security testing on one component of an application, it appears to be solid. But when we look at the interaction, when we add more moving parts, then we might realize that there is some kind of a security vulnerability. So sometimes we might, for instance, have multiple code variables with differing values when that variable is passed to a different application component. Interception proxies, such as the burp suite, can also be used as part of security testing. This is also called an inline proxy, and it's used to crawl a web application, in other words, to pour over it looking for weaknesses. The interception proxy also has the ability to capture and replay web-specific traffic for an application where parameter values can be modified. So this is really akin to a man-in-the-middle attack, but it's part of testing. The Burp Suite Toolkit also allows the creation of custom attacks in order to observe application behavior. We have to account for the fact that there are malicious users that will perhaps attempt these types of attacks, and we have to think in the same way. Interception proxies, however, are invisible to client web browsers. Now, an example of an interception proxy is the OWASP Z attack proxy. So if you search up OWASP and Z attack proxy, which I've done here, it's pretty easy to find the web page that explains what the purpose of this is. Its purpose is to help find security vulnerabilities in web applications. And really, this is a tool that we could use at various phases of the system's development life cycle. So there are plenty of tools that are available to automate security testing, also in the form of interception proxies as seen here. Despite our best technical efforts to secure an application, and it's very important that we do this, 
In the end, user acceptance testing is what really solidifies our solution as being usable. Does the solution behavior align with design requirements and our user needs addressed with our solution? So we might identify problems that were missed during testing. And this might be brought about by end user testing. Maybe, for example, we've got a calculation feature in a web app that does work, but is unacceptably slow. We also have to think about regulatory and contractual compliance to make sure that the solution aligns with those. And yet another aspect of managing vulnerabilities is during company mergers and acquisitions, where we can assign different sensitivity levels to data so that we can control authorized access to that data. In this video, we talked about security testing. 